Five years ago today, I started making videos on YouTube and the channel has just crossed $1 million in revenue just through YouTube ads alone. And if we look at my top performing video, it's gotten nearly 10 million views and it's brought in $191,000 in revenue. Now, this is an absolutely ridiculous amount of money to make on the internet. And so in this video, I wanna break down the revenue of my top five videos on YouTube. And we're gonna talk about some lessons I've learned along the way that you could potentially apply to your side hustles as well. We're also gonna break down how many views you need to get on YouTube to be able to make a living. And the flywheel economics of the platform that make it a particularly lucrative place to make content even today. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is this is very much the long game. So I started making videos in June of 2017, and you can see I was getting like five views, 10 views, 20 views, 22 views, and so on. And revenue-wise, the channel did not make a single penny until nine months into my YouTube journey where I'd made around 85 videos at that point. Then the channel did start making money, and you can see the numbers are fairly small in the early days. But then we start to get into interesting territory where each day the channel is making around about 80 to 120 and this was the equivalent to what I was making working as a junior doctor for 40 to 60 hours a week in the UK's National Health Service. And then around the three year mark in 2020, the revenue of the channel starts going absolutely insane. And so the first lesson we can learn from all of this is that stuff really takes a large amount of time. Every good thing in life benefits from compounding. The more effort you put into it over a very long period of time, the more likely it is to return results. And when it comes to things like making content or building a business, there are so many people that try it out for a little bit, but they don't stick with it long enough to actually see the results that come over time. All right, for lesson number two, let's have a look at this video that I uploaded on the 31st of May, 2018. So about nine months into my YouTube journey, this was around video number 85. And somehow this video completely exploded onto the scene. And this was the video that out of anything I've ever made has most changed the trajectory of my YouTube channel and therefore changed my life completely. But crucially, this was video number 85. There was no guarantee at all that this video was gonna be successful. And so lesson number two is that genuinely, it just takes one single piece of content to change your life. You just never know which one that's gonna be. Had I quit YouTube at 80, four videos, not making any penny up until that point, thinking, oh, this thing isn't working, I would not have made the 85th video that kind of really made all the difference. All right, let's now move on to the highest performing video I've ever made, and that is this one, Nine Passive Income Ideas, which has had 9.8 million views and has created a revenue of $191,258. And this video continues to be the gift that keeps on giving, bringing in 17,000 views in the last 48 hours alone. And there's two points that I wanna make from this video. Uh, the first one is that we can kind of treat these sorts of YouTube videos as digital assets they are investments. An investment is something that puts money in our pocket. And so the fact that I've put the time and the effort into making this video and sticking it on YouTube means that this video is generating money. It's generating passive income. It is making me money even when I'm sleeping, which is kind of the definition of an investment. Now, when we think of investment, we often think of things like real estate or crypto and stuff. But like right now, my crypto has lost me a lot of money and real estate investments I've made in properties and stuff have generated way less than $191,258. In fact, there's a property I've bought in Manchester in the north of the UK where I paid 300,000 pounds for that property and every year it makes around 10,000. This one video alone has already returned way more than that investment in Manchester is gonna return for the next 20 or 30 years. And for me, I found that this attitude of treating YouTube videos and stuff that I create on the internet as if it's an investment, it kind of helps me get into the right mindset because the thing with an investment is that you wouldn't expect it to have a return immediately. You'd expect it to have a return over the long term. And so to be honest, the more I think of it in these terms, the less I'm attached to the individual outcomes of a video, how well did it do in its first 24 hours? I don't really care. What I care is that these videos are investment vehicles. They're hopefully providing value to people on the internet over the long term, and I'm hopefully making money from them as well over the long term. The second lesson that we can learn from this video in particular is that this video nearly didn't happen. It was meant to be just a plug for a Skillshare class that I was making about productivity or something. But then at the last minute, instead of sort of half-assing it and being like, hey, this is just a class, check, out, check it out, link below. We decided that actually, you know what? This is a video on the YouTube channel. Let's take it seriously. It's worth investing a little bit more time into planning this video and trying to make it actually good. And I often think back to this video because if I'm ever in the mood, and this happens quite often where I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to put effort into this thing. Oh, I kind of want to half-ass it. I'll think back to this video and think, no, sometimes putting in just that extra 15 minutes of effort like really, really, really pays off in a way that you would not have ever predicted. All right, the second highest performing video on the channel is this one, How to Invest for Beginners. This video has had 5.2 million views since it was published in October, 2020, and it's generated $87,200 of revenue. And the lesson for this video is that this video did not do well at all in the first few days to weeks after it was published. It was squarely the worst performing video we'd had in the previous 10. And so when I put this video out, I was feeling a bit like, oh, you know, I spent so long making this video. I put so much effort into it. It was a 29 minute long video. It took ages to edit. And I was a little bit down in the dumps that the video didn't perform particularly well. But then somehow over time, it's just continued to grow and grow. And now it's one of the highest performing videos on the channel. And the lesson I've learned from this is to not worry about things that are outside of my control. Like it's within my control, how much time and effort and energy I'm putting into this video, but it's completely outside of my 
my control how well this video is performing. And the lesson I've learned over time is that this applies to everything in life, not just YouTube videos as well. Like we always have those anxieties and fears and concerns about things that are fundamentally outside of our control. But if we can figure out where that line is, you know, what are the things in my control? What are the things outside of it? And I'm choosing to not worry about the things outside of my control. This is a standard concept from Stoicism or the Serenity Prayer. Then it just makes life a lot less stressful and a lot more fun. By the way, quick thing, uh, if you wanna get a slice of some of this YouTuber pie money and you've been thinking of starting or leveling up a YouTube channel, you should definitely check out my completely free seven day email course. It's called the Part-Time YouTuber Crash Course. And it's a series of emails that I'll send you every day for seven days that teach you loads of stuff about how to be a part-time YouTuber. And people have said, I can't believe this is a free email course. It's just that valuable. So if you wanna check that out, hit the link in the video description. Anyway, let's get on with the video. All right, the third highest grossing video on the channel in revenue is this one, how to build a website in 2022. This video has had 866,000 views, but has generated an enormous $42,000 in revenue. And if we look at the RPM, the revenue per thousand views, it's $48.68, which is absolutely absurd. And it's by far the highest RPM video on the channel. Now, again, this was a bit of a rogue one. I almost didn't make this video because it's sort of a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. I'm meant to be a productivity YouTube channel, but I'm making a video about how to make a website. But the mental model for this video, the thing I was thinking about at the time was, will this video be useful to at least one person out there? I knew how to make websites. I thought I had a reasonable amount of expertise in that, and I wanted to teach the topic. And even though it was outside of my niche, I decided that, you know what, hopefully this video will be helpful to at least one person, therefore let's make the video. And again, we can see from the graph that I absolutely tanked in the initial few weeks following the launch of the video. But then very nicely over time, it just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And somehow the niche of making websites, probably because companies like Squarespace and Wix and all these other website builders are trying to run ads on it and competing against each other. All of these companies have so much money and therefore the ad prices go higher and higher. And that's why the RPM for this video is so absurdly high and why this video, even though it doesn't have anywhere near as many views as some of the other ones, it's generated $42,132 in revenue. We've already talked about video four, so let's move on to video number five, which is how I type really fast, 156 words per minute. Again, I had no idea that this video would do well. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna teach something that I know. I know how to type fast. I've been working on this skill for the last 10 years. So let me just make a video breaking down the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. And again, completely out of the blue, completely inexplicably, this video somehow found an audience and went viral to the point that it's got 8.2 million views and has generated $25,143 in revenue. Now, the RPM of this video is really low, the revenue per thousand views. It's 15 times lower than the revenue of the website video. And the lesson here is that even though this video did really well by the numbers, had I put the same amount of time and effort into making videos of a different genre, then maybe those videos would have made even more money. I'm not saying I should have done. I don't really care about revenue as like the primary metric I'm driving for with the channel. I'd much rather make videos about things I'm passionate about. But the lesson here is for any kind of business owner or, any, or anyone starting a side hustle, often the choice of industry that you're gonna be in or the, or the choice of niche or the choice of audience that you're targeting is gonna be a huge multiplier or not on the amount of money you can make from that business. For example, I know a bunch of students who like setting up businesses that help other students, but students famously don't have money. And so it's really hard to make a sustainable business that targets students because they're not gonna have the money to pay you for anything. Whereas it's way easier making a business that targets people who own businesses because people who own businesses make lots of money and want to spend money to make more money and save time. And so targeting businesses with money, with your products is generally a way easier to make a decent living on the side. Speaking of making a living, let's now talk about how many views you actually need on YouTube to get to different levels of wealth. Now, firstly, this depends on a few different things like what geography you're in, where you're from, what your niche is, whether you have monetization sources outside of just AdSense. But to keep things simple, we're just gonna use AdSense. Just those five to 30 second ads that play before YouTube videos as the primary source of monetization. All right, let's start with question number one. How many views do you need on YouTube to make some pocket money? Now here, in order to make any money on YouTube at all, you have to join the YouTube Partner Program, which requires 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. So how much effort do you have to put in to get to the point where you're even making this pocket money? And so for me, that was 52 videos and six months to get to my first 1,000 subscribers. I asked on Twitter, people who are monetized, how long did it take you? And MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee replied, Marquez, if you're watching this, hit me up for a collab. But Marquez replied saying it took him five months and 200 videos to get to that 1,000 subscribers. For some people it takes less, for some people it takes more. But if we look at the average stats provided by TubeBuddy, link down below if you wanna check it out, the average stats show that the average channel with 1,000 subscribers has 152 videos. So it takes quite a lot of ramp up time to get to the point where YouTube is making any money at all. You can get lucky beforehand, or if your videos are really good and they find an audience somehow, you might be able to get monetized from video number one and two. But generally the thing I always say is that you have to sign up to doing this for at least two years if you wanna expect any kind of return out of it. Now, once you're monetized, again, depending on your niche and CPM and stuff, on average, you probably need somewhere in the region of 15,000 views a month to be making somewhere between five and $10 a day 
as kind of pocket money. Now, this might sound like quite a lot of views because if you're thinking, okay, I need to publish a video every week, it means that each of those videos need to get 4,000 views. But the nice thing about YouTube is that every single time you make a video, it's not just, you know, the initial views that that video gets. That video gets added to your library, your back catalog, and people might well watch that video years after you've actually uploaded it. And so really the more of these videos you can put out, the more you're building up the back catalog. And now each of these little views, even if you're getting like, I don't know, 10 views a day on each of your videos, if you have 300 videos, you're getting 3,000 views a day across all of your videos, which is pretty solid. And this contributes to the flywheel economies of YouTube. Every time you make a video, A, that's making you revenue from the people watching that video. But secondly, if that person is a new viewer, then they're getting introduced to the rest of your content. And then they might watch even more of your videos, which generates you even more revenue. And now they're gonna become even more of a fan. So they might even then decide to buy your products if you sell things. And on top of that, the algorithm is then learning what sort of viewer preferences are liking your videos on your channel. And so the more data it gets from certain types of viewers, the more it can push out that video to other types of viewers and you create this sort of flywheel where it takes ages to get going in the first place because it takes a lot of effort to put these videos out there but once it's going then it's sort of it's genuinely quite hard to stop and it almost keeps going by itself all right let's move on to the next level of wealth which is how many views you need on YouTube to be able to go part-time on your job so for example let's say you're making $35,000 a year in your day job that means that if you're working five days a week then for every day a week that you're working you're making $7,000 a year so if you want to cut down from five days a week to for example four days a week Week, then you've got to figure out a way of making up that extra $7,000 a year. And that means that every month you need to be making around $600 from YouTube. If we look at my stats from basically the instant that I monetized my channel after about a month, so a year into making YouTube videos, I was now making $1,665 a month. And I was making around about that amount for the next six months. So if I wanted to, and I was allowed to, I could have gone part-time in my job as a junior doctor and gone maybe down to three days a week, which would have been pretty fun. And so if we say that, for example, the average RPM revenue per thousand views is around about $3. Then to make $600 a month to be able to cut down to four days a week, you would need 200,000 views every month. Again, obviously this varies depending on your niche. If you're, for example, a personal finance or investing or crypto type YouTuber, then your RPMs, your niche is way more profitable. And so you need really a lot fewer views than that to be able to go part-time on your job. And in fact, if I was starting a YouTube channel like right now and I didn't have my current one, uh, I'd probably make a personal finance investing and crypto themed channel because for the same amount of effort, I just have to get like 10 times less views to get the same amount of money, which would be pretty good. All right, so how much money do you need to be able to quit your job? To answer that, let's have a look at a few examples. So we've got this example of Silicon Valley Girl. Now she's in a highly profitable niche, essentially targeting tech-focused people in the West, which is a highly profitable niche. And when her channel was getting 500,000 views a month, she was making around $3,900 in monthly revenue. That's around $47,000 a year, which is enough to quit your job. That's a pretty good living for someone going full-time on YouTube, for example. Now, Marina also has a 1.5 million subscriber channel in Russian, and this is a lower RPM channel because it's Russia and there are fewer companies advertising in for Russian-speaking viewers than there are for English-speaking viewers in the West. Now, if that channel gets 2.3 million views a month, that corresponds to around $4,000 a month, which is around $50,000 dollars a year, which is enough to quit your job. And I think using Marina as an example is interesting because she's got these three separate channels. She's got exactly the same skills on YouTube, but one channel is 16 times more profitable than another channel purely because of the niche that she's picked. Now, in my case, it was about two and a bit years into the journey of making YouTube videos when I probably made 100 and something YouTube videos that my channel was making enough money for me to quit my job, i.e. around about $4,000 a month. And we can see here that that corresponds to 1.6 million views, 1.9, 2 million views, 2 million views, 2 million views, somewhere between one. 1.5 to 2 million views per month was what was corresponding to enough revenue for me to quit my job. Now, my channel has a lower RPM than it would if I was just a tech channel or just a finance channel, but because I'm making lots of videos about books and about productivity and about student stuff, that stuff tends to have lower RPMs because those people tend not to have that much money. And also because I have a decent chunk of my viewers that are from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, countries like that, my homeboys, those countries also have about 10 times lower ad rates than they do in the UK or the US or Canada. All right, so how many views do you need on YouTube to become rich? Well, well, obviously that massively depends on your definition of rich. I certainly felt rich when my channel was making over $100,000 a year. That was when I was like, oh my freaking God, this is absolutely insane. And that happened around the time when we were getting somewhere between three and five million views per month. That was corresponding to 100,000 a month, just in AdSense revenue. But because then two years into the journey, I started building other streams of revenue around the business. Like it wasn't just AdSense that was contributing to the revenue of this channel. And I made a bunch of videos breaking down all the different revenue streams and how AdSense is only like 20% of the 
the pie. And one of the mistakes that I notice YouTubers and creators in general make today is that in a way they don't treat their thing like a business. They treat it like a creative outlet, which is fine, but businesses have been trying to figure this stuff out for absolutely decades, if not hundreds of years. And there's a lot of stuff that we can learn from the world of business about how to appropriately monetize our YouTube channels or our Instagram pages or our TikTok channels and how to turn those into sustainable businesses where we're potentially even hiring people and being able to delegate the stuff that we don't wanna do. And the creators that start thinking like entrepreneurs, uh, we've come up with a word for it in our team, we call them creatorpreneurs. And if you're interested in learning more about that, we've got this five day completely free email crash course, the creatorpreneur crash course, where if you click the link in the video description, you can give us your email and then every day for the next five days, I will send you an email. Uh, I won't actually personally send it, it's, it's automated, but it's like really good content. Uh, every day for the next five days, it'll send you an email with like a bunch of information and resources and stuff around how you can also level up your creative side hustle and start thinking more like an entrepreneur. We've had responses just to that completely free email sequence from people saying, oh my God, I can't believe this is free. I would have paid money for this thing. Alternatively, if you're not yet at the point where you're leveling up your creative side hustle and you haven't maybe gotten started, you might like to check out again, a completely free part-time YouTuber crash course, which is a seven day email sequence where every day for seven days I'll send you an email with like some information about how you can potentially get started on YouTube and start on this path to, I don't know, building an audience, making money, providing value, all that fun stuff. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, you might like to check out this video over here, which is that nine passive income ideas video. So you'll see what it was about that video that made it go viral. And hopefully you'll also get nine ideas for passive income that you can apply to your life. So thank you so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. -bye.